Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Our gathering chant is CBW 650. This day God gives me. Kindly stand. <clears throat> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. We come together to give God praise for the many gifts, as we sang in our entrance hymn, and to ask for his strength and his inspiration and guidance throughout the day. That we may worthily bring our prayers and petitions to God, we pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response to the psalm is let your love be upon us O Lord even as we hope in you
invite you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. A lot of uh, martial imagery in today's first reading. Shield and sword and breastplate and helmet. You know, arm yourself, be prepared to fight the devil. Interesting imagery. And uh, there was a good commentary on it in the uh, Word Among Us. They said, are you ready to put on the armor of God to defend yourself from yourself? When we read this popular passage, we conjure up images of righteously defending ourselves, swords drawn from the tactics of the devil, as if these attacks would come to us from the outside. There is an element of truth to this, but we should know that spiritual attacks may come from within us as well. The devil is very clever at using our own weaknesses, some that we don't even recognize, to his advantage. He is very good at disrupting our peace and confidence in Christ and replacing them with anger, impatience, or selfishness. Sometimes the devil can even use these things we love the most to his advantage, especially if they pull us away from the Lord. How can we defend against these subtle attacks? Good, good thoughts, good meditation there. The attacks of the devil often, I'd say probably predominantly, are from when inside us. In today's gospel, we see Jesus being attacked from the inside in a way, in a way. In terms of the Pharisees come to him and say, you better get out of here. Herod wants to kill you. Fear is an attack of the devil. To fear for his life, to say, okay, I've got to get out of here, to be scared, that's perfectly natural, perfectly human. That's something Jesus needs to defend himself against. And he does quite handily in today's gospel. Go and tell that fox, I've got to be about my father's business today and tomorrow. And the next day, we'll see. No prophet is killed outside of Jerusalem. In the first reading today, Paul uses some images that maybe are helpful to us in, in protecting ourselves on the inside, maybe even more than on the outside. A belt of truth. Being humble, being honest about our situation is very important if we're to be able to say, to, to live with integrity. The breastplate of righteousness. We have to be just. If we aren't just, then we aren't protected from the devil. We're, we're going to fall into temptation. Shoes to proclaim the gospel of peace. Uh, it means we've got to be on solid footing. We've got to have our feet well planted. We've got to be able to move quickly. Slip on shoes and, and uh, 
Flip-flops just aren't going to do it. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. To trust in the Lord. To have that shield that protects us because we believe. We trust in God's goodness. The helmet of salvation. Having that sense, which ties in very much with faith, that God has saved us. That we are redeemed by the Lord. And the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We're sharpening that sword right now, listening to the Scriptures, letting the Word of God enter into us to inspire us and guide us. As we continue in our Mass today, we do ask the Lord to assist us, to defend us, to give us the armor, the protection we need throughout this day. Not only to be safe ourselves, but to have the courage, the strength, the guidance we need to reach out, to go on the offense. Douglas MacArthur said the best defense is a good offense. And our call is not only to protect ourselves from the devil and protect ourselves from uh, fear and, and, and um, uh, the, the insecurity that comes with that, but also to be people that proclaim the Word of God, that go out and proactively seek to bring the good news to others. As we continue in our Mass, we thank the Lord for calling us to this battle. We ask Him to defend us in this battle and to help us to be victorious with Him, with the victory that comes from self-sacrificing love and from the confidence of knowing that we're not alone, but that God in his love is with us always. God bless you. Let us stand and use the sword of prayer, bringing to God our prayers and the petitions uh, that are in our hearts. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders, that they may be open to God's guidance and that they may be given the courage and wisdom they need to lead well. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith, that having received this gift we may treasure it, burnish it, and use it day by day to reach out in love to assist others. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are under attack today, the attack of the devil or the attack of fear or a lack of confidence or a lack of trust. We pray for all those people that in the midst of their trials they may be given the consolation of God's love and care. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope. Me, your unworthy servant, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying, Amen, upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Govern by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for health and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Our missioning hymn is 563 in the CBW. Sing a new song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing all Children from your sleep, your Savior now has gone. He has turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord, and your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. My soul, for I have seen the glory of the Lord. The trumpet sounds, the dead shall be raised. I know my Savior.